Ford. Neither is Sean Mannion. Mannion in the green trunks, Bake in the tan trunks. Any films of him, but obviously he is not, or at least he's not fighting this first round as a southpaw. Even his trainer said that, so that's surprising. Sean Mannion with a good left jab and a right jab, and Bake just kind of smiled. If they go the distance, they use the round system here in New Jersey. These first couple rounds, very important for both fighters, I think especially for Mannion. I think Bake has seen a tape or two of Mannion, but Mannion has obviously never seen Bake. And Mannion has told me earlier, he said, I've got the box, but not give away those early rounds. Well, we'll soon find out if uh, Angel Bacon has had 26 screen puffs or if he is indeed a tough fighter. This is his debut in the United States, and he's smiling here in the first round. And he's using a, a, a lot of the ring here as he takes a look. As, at his opponent. Remember that Mannion is a boxer puncher. He can fight to both sides. Good right hand there by Bake. His first real connection of the fight. Mannion will look to counter punch against Bake, trying to pick him up hard as he comes in. And uh, Sean is very good at doing that, though he's not a big banger. He's not a powerful puncher. But with the accumulation of blows, he can hurt you. Mannion with uh, 12 knockouts and his 26 wins. <laughs> came to the United States when he was 17 as an amateur boxer. Figured that uh, he could get more action and earn more money here in pro. And that's been the case. His opponent, until Bay comes here from Korea. Because he wants to take the, uh, take the opportunity of fighting in the United States. And uh, Frank Cappuccino establishing his authority with the Korean. Telling him when I say break, I mean break. You may have noticed that uh, Bake a hit on the break. Say that quickly. Fake <laughs> hit on the break. Ten times. And there is a language barrier there, obviously, so that could create a problem for uh, Fake. Less than 30 seconds to go in a getting to know you first round. And this is exactly what we expected in round one from both these fighters. Both being extremely cautious. Mannion could steal this round just with some of the jabs he threw out. That's how quiet Bake has been. <laughs> Round two scheduled for 10. We're looking at junior middleweight Sean Mannion in the green, in Chul Bake of Korea in the TAM. And even after the first round, we still don't know much about Bake. He was very quiet. He took a long look at Mannion. Yes, he, he's not unloading anything yet. He's stalking Mannion and... Uh, trying to unload, but uh, wasn't very effective in that first round. We know this about Bake right off the bat. He doesn't cut off the ring well, and he is really fighting a lefty in the uh, improper position. He is closer to Mannion's left hand than he is to Mannion's right hand. That goes against the theory of boxing how you fight a southpaw. And because of that and a lot of other things, I gave Mannion the first round, though he did not score uh, many points, he did score some. Good body punch by Bake, a right hand. Bake uh, with a tough jab there. He's getting close to the man. Mannion battles his way off the ropes. And you see Mannion slipping the right hand of Bake and trying to make Bake pay. Bake looks like he's a, an effective body puncher. Whenever he's turned that on, he's connected well. He just landed a very good right hand to the head of Sean Mannion. So the Korean has come alive with good body shots. Countering right hand by Mannion in the green. Halfway through round two. Mannion with a straight left high in the head of Bates. Bates with a hard right hand to the body. Incho Bake is vaguely reminiscent of uh, Young Suk Wang, the Korean we saw against Curry. Their styles are not dissimilar. No question that the, he doesn't have much of a jab, but he is a hooker. And now he is uh, getting a lot closer to Mannion. And he is getting those body shots in. Of course, that's what he wants to do, to try and slow Mannion up. 
is there to be hit. He's wide open. Banyan has to exploit that. He may be effective on, uh, on the, hitting the body, but he's wide open, and Banyan just uh, drilled him with the left hand. Bake turns square to Banyan when he, he attempts to throw the right hand, and that's when Banyan was able to land his own left. So far, Banyan's done a pretty good job of slipping punches to the head. Bake has been affected right, in the body. Go, come on. Imagine with a rat a tat tat just before the bell. Korea's Inchul Bake with some pressure on Sean Mannion in round two. An effective two to the body. But Bake is wide open, has his hands down. Mannion has been doing a lot of backtracking, a lot of slipping. He's been taking some body shots. Just took a right hand from Bake. Mannion definitely is going to try and outbox Bake. I don't think he wants to try and outslug him. Well, there's really no percentage in that. Mannion knows. Good right hand by Bake after a right hand by Mannion. So they exchange. We were told that Bake was a southpaw. Not once has he fought that way. And Sean Mannion was proud of the fact that he found three southpaws to train with and spar with here in this area. I guess that effort went for naught. Obviously, they saw no videotapes of me. I guess not. And in the second round, I gave the uh, round to Bates. I he did some effective body work, and uh, I gave him that round. Mannion on his toes. He tried a lead left hand, but the bait ducked underneath. Cappuccino... Uh, Breaks him up. Mannion's against the ropes and he gets out of there. Bake has discovered that a lead right hand will work against Mannion on occasion and he's starting to land it. The punch has become a little straighter, the right hand from Bake. It was more looping at the beginning of the fight. Mannion has yet to back up Bake. Bake just comes forward all the time. But I guess Sean figures that he can outbox him this way. Well, and remember, a key part of uh, Mannion's strategy is to fight reasonably well over the first four or five rounds and take the Korean into the later rounds where he has never been. All the Koreans win have been by KO. In Chil Bake, 26-0 with 26 knockouts. And Sal, you were absolutely right when you pointed out that Bake cannot cut the ring off on Mannion, and he's not even trying. He's just following him around the ring. Now watch closely. Every once in a while, you'll see Sean Mannion change up on Bake, like at that moment when he threw the left hand. Every once in a while, he'll go flat-footed and slug, and then he'll move. Another thinking man fight here. The body work here by Bake. Right hand by Bake to the head of Mannion. Mannion with a good left hand, countering left. He's blocking those shots with his hands as far as the body work is concerned. Now, he wants Bake to come at him a little bit more, too. And he may want Bake to punch himself out. That may be part of that strategy. <laughs> Round four of a scheduled 10 round of junior middleweights and Sean Mannion in the green, in Chul Bake of Korea in the tan trunks. Now, neither fighter's been down or cut over the first three. Inchul Bake fights with a smile. Well, that's what happens when you're 26 and 0 with 26 knockouts. They're concerned in Mannion's corner about him fighting on the inside with Bake and letting himself get cornered in those ropes. They want him to be in the center of the ring moving. There was a moment there in the third, right here in our neutral corner to our left, when Mannion just covered up and let Bake go to town on him. And that's what uh, Jimmy Conley was concerned about in Sean's corner. He virtually gave away maybe 25 seconds. And in that second round, uh, because of that action, I uh, gave Bake the second round. I've got him ahead 2-1. to one. Countering uh, right hook by the lefty, Sean Mannion on the head of into a Bake. Bake connects with a right hand, a couple of body shots, then he misses badly with the left. When Sean is on the inside with him, that's when Bake digs to the body. But in the center of the ring, at long distance, so maybe he can have his way. 
Bake doesn't block many punches, except with his face. And Sean is not putting his punches together as well as I think he would like. Bake is completely an offensive fighter. He's a go-for-broke junior middleweight. Came in at 153 and a half. Oh, with credentials that are heavy. He is the uh, Oriental Pacific Federation champion with five successful defenses, 26 knockouts and 26 straight wins. But here tonight in Atlantic City, he is fighting a cutie in Sean Mannion. And so far, Mannion has not exploited Bake's lack of defense. Good right hand by Bake. He drove Mannion back with that right hand. Mannion comes back with the left. Two rights by Bake. Mannion with a left hand and the crowd loves that one. A lot of fans here from Boston cheering on the Irishman. Less than a minute to go in round four. When Bake throws the right hand, he lunges in. He is wide open. And Sean Mannion, I think, soon will begin to exploit that. Another left hand by Mannion. Bake keeps coming forward. Left hand by Bake and then a right to the head. Mannion with two chopping right hands. This one's starting to percolate now. Mannion with a left hand. Mannion holding those elbows close to the body, blocking those body blows and coming upstairs with the left hand. Right hand by Bake on the head of Mannion. Excellent round. Seconds to go in round four. Spinning in this one, we've got a boxer in Magnet against a slugger in Bake. No knockdowns in the fight, neither man is cut. got off first. He hasn't been able to back up Bake, but he certainly has been beating him to the punch with the jab and also with the lead left. And as this fight goes on, there you see my scoring. Bake, I have my head 2-1-1. One, one. I made the last round even. And uh, as this fight goes on, I think you will see Sean Mannion take a few more chances. He's not done that so far because he respects the power of Bake. Right now, he's starting to stop and hit more often. Just scored with the right hook on the head of uh, Bake. Bake with a body shot with the right hand, backs up uh, Mannion. Mannion with a right-left combination, even though he had his back to the corner. I noticed, too, Al, here that Bake isn't as effective body punching as he was earlier. Well, he's not getting close enough to Mannion, I don't think, and uh, Mannion is keeping him busy with those jabs and straight left hands. Right hand by Bake. Mannion covering up here. They don't want this in his corner. They want Sean on the move. Every time he stops and covers up, the uh, bake uh, rips him to the body and occasionally lands some straight rights to the head. Mannion is using everything in his experience tonight against Bake. I think some of this is planned on Mannion's part. I think he wants to do that occasionally, make the Korean punch, and tire him out for these later rounds. Good hard jab there by Mannion in the green. There's no question that Bake is wide open. He is there to be hit. I mean, Bake is wide open as he comes in. There's a countering right hand by Mannion. You see, Mannion went back to the ropes and allowed Bake uh, to throw a couple of shots, countered with the right hand. Now, all this craftiness could be undone by power. The man's got 26 knockouts and 26 straight wins. I don't care on what side of the ocean it is. He could be the real thing. Final seconds, round five. Got to have some power someplace, but he has hit Manny with some good rights and lefts, but so far, Sean hasn't buckled. Manny with a left hand. And uh, let's watch Frank Cappuccino warning in Bake about using uh, his head. That takes care of round five. Considering uh, 26 knockouts and 26 straight wins, uh, Inchul Bake has not hurt Sean Mannion in this fight. 
we're at the halfway point in this fight. And as this fight goes on, I have to believe Sean Mannion uh, becomes a bigger favorite because he's been 10 rounds many, many times in his career. And as I said, Bake has never gone that distance. High stakes, too, in this encounter for the winner. That's right. The winner of this fight uh, has been assured uh, a shot against the winner of the Davey Moore Roberto Duran fight for the junior middleweight title, which is now held by Moore. And it'll take place June 16th in New York's Madison Square Garden. Where is all that body work from Bake that we saw early in the fight? Mannion has offset that with some very clever boxing. And Mannion had Bake come toward him. Bake figured he was going to hang on the ropes, and all of a sudden, Mannion was the one who got off first, drove Bake back with a left hand. Often in fights like this, uh, with a slugger and a boxer, uh, when Mannion could, Mannion could back Bake up, he might make this an entirely different fight because often sluggers don't like to go backwards. Last round, Mannion was very effective, and uh, I gave him the round. And so I have the fight dead even at this point. Left hand by Mannion. Baked with a couple of effective uppercuts. The body shots are being blocked by Mannion. We're halfway through round six. I do believe this is a strategy on Mannion's part. He wants to cover up and then come out counter punching. And he has got Baked thinking now about coming in. Look at those counter shots by Mannion. Right hook by Mannion. with a left hand. Bake, as, as you can see, is wide open when he's on the attack. Mannion taking advantage of it. Sean Mannion has all kinds of confidence now. He's willing to stay in that corner and trade with Bake. Maybe a mistake. Well, Bake has just landed two hard right hands. Sean looks okay, however, but those two right hands just moments ago were the best punches Bake has thrown in the fight. Notice how low Bake's hands are now. Great. I'm surprised Mandy isn't landing even more often with that, those low hands of Bake. Counter punch is Sean Mannion heading down the stretch of uh, round number six with Incho Bake. Hands are looking to work. Mannion with two good left hands. And he missed with the third. Right hand, uppercut by Mannion. A lead right hand by Injul Bake as Sean Mannion uh, was dwelling for a while in the neutral corner. That's been the only uh, time that Mannion has been susceptible to blows. Whenever he's come to a rest and he's hung in a corner. Otherwise, he's been very effective pecking away at Injul Bake. And he's been slipping a lot of punches, blocking a lot of the body blows by the Korean. We're into round seven, scheduled for ten. And this is the point in this fight uh, in which Mannion said he would come on. He would try and take it to uh, Bake a little bit more and try and back him up. So let's see if he can do that. In the corner of Sean Mannion, uh, Jimmy Connolly says you've got a shutout going to stay away from him. Well, I wouldn't go quite that far, but I do think uh, Mannion is ahead in this fight. I've got him ahead three, two, and one. So um, I think Sean Mannion is ahead, but I would uh, say the verdict is still close. I'll guarantee you this, I mean, Mannion at this point knows that uh, this is not some kind of uh, wrecker who has come in here. I mean, his record has 26 knockouts and 26 straight wins. You wonder, who is this guy making his debut here in the United States? But he has not hurt Mannion, and I'm sure Sean is feel, feeling much more confident now. Uh, Sean faced Gary Guyton in a fight we did here on ESPN. He lost it on a cut at the TKO, but Guyton certainly, I think, was a more formidable puncher than uh, apparently Bacon. Good right hand by Bacon. Again, Mannion shakes it off. Halfway through round seven. Frank Cappuccino went to a great length in the, between rounds to talk to an interpreter in uh, Bake's corner to emphasize that Bake hits too much with an open glove to make him understand that. Oh, you see that glove open up on a couple of those overhand rights. Now that's dangerous because a fighter can get thumbed or a fighter can get cut with a straight lace. And Mannion has had a history of cutting from time to time. In this fight, no evidence of that. Less than a minute to go in round seven. Bake looks like he's slowed down here in the seventh round. 
He does look a bit fatigued, and that is to be expected. He has never gone the 10 round distance. Right hook by Mannion, right on the chin of Bates. The bait gets tagged again by Mannion. And the, the Korean's hands are dropping lower and lower as this fight gets older. My goodness, he looks fatigued. He's used to having his way. This might be the time for Sean Yanya to go to him and back him up. Good luck to him. A spray there of uh, perspiration off the head of the Korean as uh, he was really rattled by that left hand. Jabs, then a left hand, brings another left. That takes care of round seven. Sal Marciano with Al Bernstein, ringside of Resorts International in Atlantic City. This is the featured bout of our two and a half hour telecast tonight. Scheduled for 10 rounds between Sean Mannion in the green in Bank of Korea in the tan. We're in round eight. Either man cut her down. Mannion has been the cutie, outboxing the Korean, who's won all 26 of his pro fights by knockout. And when Bake does land a left hook like he did there, or a right hand, it does not seem to hurt Sean Mannion. So uh, the power that produced those 26 KOs is not uh, awing Sean Mannion. It's still dangerous though for Mannion to be in that posture against the rope. Left hand by Madden, right hook by Madden. Now he's got fake against the rope. Left hand by Madden. Fake not making a move off the rope. He's starting to take here in round eight. Well, this is what I talked about before. What happens when you back up a slugger? That's always the question. Many sluggers cannot fight going backwards. Madden now has his back on the ropes. And he's blocking his body shots. He comes out once in a while with either a left or a right. Bake wide open for a counter and shot. Bake really doesn't have a jab. He uh, doesn't rely on it. It's not part of his arsenal. Cappuccino wants him out in the center of the ring. And he is being very stern with Bake. I think he's taking a point away. Is that so? Yeah, but I don't understand for what. Let's see if we, I'll get an interpretation from the uh, commission here. Magnet continues to uh, outbox the Korean. Right hand by Bake, not full contact though. But that right hand had some starts in it by the Korean. Why'd you find that out? A point has been taken away from Bake apparently for uh, for low blow, a round has been taken away from Bake for low blows. So this round will belong to Sean Mannion no matter what happens. All right, come on, lay it out, lay it out, Sean, let him go. That's an interesting uh, ruling by Frank Cappuccino. I don't know that I saw that many low blows. And I don't remember a warning earlier about a low blow. I don't either. Final seconds of the physical eighth round. Left hand by Mannion, another. At four straight left hands by Sean Mannion. Bake now is uh, in the corner, his hands are low, and Mannion is jumping on him like a piece of raw meat. So it was academic that that point was taken away, because Sean has uh, undoubtedly won this round in any case. Mannion most effective in this and the previous three rounds. And the partisan crowd here giving him the big cheer. Fred, uh, if you do that against a slugger, sometimes you can have a field day. Frank Cappuccino is going to be second-guessed about that eighth round. I don't remember him warning uh, Bake about low blows, but at any rate, he took the entire round away from him because of an infraction. In fact, we commented that Bake hadn't gone to the body that much in recent rounds, so we'll see. There might be some controversy. Mannion, however, won that round anyway, so it made it kind of academic. Bake now trying to uh, exert more power against Mannion. Mannion better get on a bicycle here. He better stop trying to trade. But he scores with the left hand to the head of Bake. Bake with a couple of rights. And with that last round given to Mannion, I have Mannion comfortably ahead 5 2 and 1, but Bake with a big right hand. Bake was told something in his corner because he's come out here like a tiger in the round nine. They must have told him that he's way behind. They just took a round away from him. They probably told him, you better go out there and score a KO. You're not going to win in Atlantic City. 
Well, I think that that is certainly the message they gave him. His hands are so low at this point, and he is breathing so heavily that you have to wonder if he has enough left in him to, to hurt Mannion or knock him down. That decision by Cappuccino in the eighth to take a full round away from Bake should not tarnish the work of Sean Mannion. He has been very crafty tonight here against the Korean. He's fought very well. This is the fight of his life. He told me today this means everything to me in boxing uh, because I can get a title shot, and uh, he has fought that way tonight. He's been clever, and he's fought with uh, really a lot of determination. Halfway through the next to last round. Slipped the right hand by the Korean. And let's be honest, there I'm sure are people out there saying once again, how could they be ranked so highly by the WBA in the world rankings? He certainly does not look like a number one ranked fighter in the world tonight. Get out, get out, get that hands out of there. Well, I guess those 26 knockouts and 26 straight wins had a lot to do with that. But Sean Mannion is too clever for Bake. Bake is but not able to hurt Mannion. And Mannion is not a top-ranked junior middleweight. He's not the biggest banger in that division either. But I'll tell you what, Sean Mannion has a, a claim to make if he wins this fight. He's going to say, hey, I beat the number one contender in the WBC. And that ain't Sean Mannion. <laughs> Backs up uh, Bake, one of the infrequent times in this fight. Coming up, the 10th and final round. The 10th and final round, they'll touch gloves. Sean Mannion in the green, and Joe Bake in the 10. If you join this late, uh, Sean Mannion has been outboxing the Korean who's undefeated. We went into the corner of Sean between rounds. You never know, okay? He's more tired than you are, okay? All right? The guy probably got jet lag. You understand? All right? Okay? You understand now, women? Hold on. Listen to me now. I don't want you standing there. I want you to stick, 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 change position, and stick again. The guy stands it down. You can move to the side and nail him any way you want. You understand? No matter how many times they tell Sean this guy's tired, Bake has come out here in the 10th round, really throwing leather. He's connected with two right hands on Mannion's head. Mannion being backed up a little bit here. Bake realized he's got to go for broke, so he made undefeated. Well, he would, in my estimation, he would need a knockout to win. I have Mannion ahead 6-2-1. I'd be shocked if the judges had Bake in this fight at this point. But he is banging away, and Mannion is giving him a good chance right, to do that it. by languishing on those ropes. And that's exactly what Jimmy Connolly told him not to do. Left hand by Mannion. Mannion keeps Bake away with the jab. Sent him through the ropes, actually, as the, the Korean was off balance. And now you see Bake starting to sag again. He comes out, fights well for the first minute. Now he looks exhausted all over again. We're halfway through the 10th round, or is he playing possum? That's what Sean Mannion's trying to figure out, and I have a feeling that if Mannion went to him and backed him up, he could make quite a uh, punctuation point for this 10-rounder. Bake has his hands at his side. Mannion tagging him, taking advantage of that. But for Sean Mannion, he must feel he has a 10-round win in the bag. Why take chances? I'm sure that's his viewpoint at this uh, juncture. They're chanting, go, Sean, go. About 40 seconds to go in the fight. Crowd picking up the beat for Sean, and he does it himself with some good straight punches to the head of Bake. He's got 25 seconds to go in the fight. Bake doesn't look like he has enough in the gas tank to hurt Mannion. Now, in the final second, Mannion really ripping him. Bake bleeding from the nostrils. Bake heading for what will be a sad trip back to career for him. 